Hi nerds! This little video here is to talk about criteria B, uh, which is all about analysis and evaluation within your IA. Before you get started, I recommend you gather all your materials, including your 40 line sets, um, your analysis plan, if you can print it out. I think that's helpful. I think it's easier to sit and look at something and be able to write on it and add your notes. Um, you should have the rubric easily accessible. All this stuff is available in the IA folder if you need it. I also have your feedback of my IA with me and I've taken some notes and annotations on there as well. Um, so first and foremost for criteria B, it's important that we first take a moment to look at that element on the rubric and determine what exactly they're looking for. Uh, so criteria B is titled Analysis and Evaluation and it says, how well does the candidate use his or her knowledge and understanding of each of the extracts and their associated work or text to analyze and evaluate the ways in which authorial choices present the global issue? Um, so to break that down, I always, when I, when I look at a piece of criteria, I try to break it down into the simplest language so that I understand what it is that I'm meant to be doing. Uh, so I've done that up here for us. These are essentially the two things that we need to make sure we do for criteria B. Uh, we want to use knowledge of the extract. So we want to show that we understand each extract we picked. Uh, but we don't want to summarize or, or over explain things, right? So this involves making sure that throughout your IA, you are throwing in character names, specific details, things that will allude to your understanding of the text without you giving a three minute synopsis of what the whole thing is about. Um, and then secondly, you want to evaluate author's choices um, in their presentation of the issue. What intentional choices does the author make in order to present this global issue that, that you see in the text, okay? Um, so when I went through the feedback that you all gave me, thank you so much, uh, some of the strengths that were mentioned and things that you should make sure you're doing is that I tend to break down words really well. So when I come across a quote or a moment that's showing this issue for me, I'm really great at picking a word, a keyword or a phrase that I can unpack, right? Right? And when we unpack keywords and phrases, remember, there's like four layers of that annotation onion you want to consider. Number one, the actual definition of the word itself found in Merriam-Webster or whatever you want to go find it in. But the actual definition itself, be sure to look to see if there's more than one definition available for you. Sometimes lots of words have multiple meanings and that can add to the... Um, to the importance of the moment, right? If we see that there's multiple layers of the meanings. The second thing you'll look for is connotations. Remember, this has to do with connections um, to other parts of the text, to other big ideas. What do we think about when we see this word, right? Um, when, you, when we looked at light in my example, I talk about what light represents. What do we usually do when we see light? What does light usually symbolize? Things like that. All right, and then you might look at synonyms. I think it's really helpful to go find synonyms for the keywords and phrases that you're looking at, not only to gain a better understanding of the importance of the term, but also because it gives you words and things you can use um, in your analysis without having to repeat yourself over and over and over again. If you just say racism constantly, you're not really saying anything. So using those synonyms um, to get you into that place. So when you're unpacking, this stuff right it, it's it's literally like taking away all the layers seeing what's there and then connecting those ideas um, what else did you say I did well um, it was clear that I understood the text I provided a lot of detail about that specific moment and some of the feedback that was given um, was while I provide detail about that specific moment I didn't necessarily provide enough context for like what what who those characters are or how they got to that moment or why they're even in that moment i didn't really speak to any other parts of the whole story and again i'm not summarizing the entire text but what i need to do is address what's going on in this moment or what do i need to understand about these characters and from the beginning of the text maybe uh, to be able to understand the importance of the moment and the second thing that some people said is uh that it felt like I didn't get to the point that I kind of just kept talking and, and talking and talking. And while sometimes I did say some detailed analysis, it was a little bit too much. So other people said, 
you know, it was maybe too broken down to the point where I strayed away from the point. And then another person said, um, I go into too much detail in some topics and not enough or I stray away from topics in some other areas. So I really want to make sure that a few things are happening here, right? Number one, I don't want to be repetitive. I want to make sure that I am direct and specific and to the point. If I've said it once, then I do not need to say it again. And if I do feel the need to emphasize it further, I need to use different language. I need to phrase it a different way. All right, I want to make sure that I'm using character names and specific details to show my knowledge of the text and my comprehension of the book overall. I think I do that pretty well, except that I should touch on these characters, what drives them or motivates them, why are they in the situation that they're in, to set some context for my listener. Okay, and then lastly, do not spend time summarizing, right? Spend it analyzing. This is not a summary. Uh, when I did my analysis, I tended to spend more time on the Murakami text than on the Billie Eilish text. What that caused is some confusion in um, the connection of the two. There were moments where I didn't quite connect both the texts together. In fact, one person said, I didn't see the connection between the two texts until the end. So it was there, but not until the end, which might have been a bit too late. So I'm going to return back to my analysis, right? And I'm going to figure out how can I make sure all these things are going down. So I'm going to start with my text one, and I'm going to look at my intentional element here and my intentional element here. And if you notice, in that particular area, I have one, two, three, four things that I sort of break down for this first intentional element. And for the second one, second intentional element, I have three things that I break down. For my second text, I have one, sort of two, two things for the first intentional element. And for the second one, I have one, two, three, four, sort of, more like three and a half things for the second intentional element. So as I look at my how column, I can already see that I have a ton of stuff for the first text. I have way more points, talking points than I do for the second text. So I want to make sure I balance those out. I'm going to return to my first text because I went over my time, so I don't want to add more. At this point, I'm really trying to reduce my timing, so I want to take out what's unnecessary. I'm going to return to my first text where I do most of my analysis and I go over time, and I'm going to only take the most important and relevant pieces of evidence. So, for example, um, here, they when we talk about the light, hope, new beginnings, straight ahead, moving forward, looking to the future instead of the past. We look at illuminating um, is to decorate something or light it up or something that's holy. I could maybe combine these two ideas of light and illuminating into one quicker idea. That already, just by reading it, feels fairly repetitive to me. Um, we talk about the stars representing the past. Um, that might not be the best piece to analyze for my actual overall thesis. So I'm going to go through and figure out what am I going to remove from that first text analysis so that I A, reduce my timing, and B, ensure that um, I'm equally covering both texts. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? What else? And I think that's really about it for analysis, except that I will want to return back to my Y column and just make sure that what I've broken down here fully connects back to my global issue and that I'm mentioning that again. And then I'm always ensuring that I know what the author was trying to do with that issue and why they were presenting it in the way that they did. All right. So I'm going to return to my text and work on that. I'm going to fix up my plan. You'll see those changes in the plan in the coming day or two. Uh, you should do the same. If you already have a plan, lovely plan like so, you should return to that and work on analyzing that. If you're starting from scratch for whatever reason, then you should begin by going through these steps, right? So in each text, you want to identify an intentional element. And you're going to want two for each text. Uh, one is not going to be quite enough, and more than two is going to take too much time. Next, you want to find those keywords and phrases to unpack, right? So if I'm looking at this moment where they're sitting on this dock looking out at the beach, 
I'm going to pull a direct quoted phrase from the story, from the text, to analyze. And that's where I want to find those important keywords to unpack. Third step is to connect those elements, those keywords back to my global issue. And then lastly, make sure I am treating each text equally. Uh, that is that for criteria B. Good luck. Send me any questions you might have. And the next time we're in class together, we will take a look at criteria C and D and start working towards uh, finishing up your IA plan. Uh, good luck. Hang in there. Use that big, beautiful brain of yours.